there's a specific shot I've wanted to capture for a really long time. But it turns out making it happen was a lot harder than I thought in ways that totally surprised me. So this is the new Insta360 X4. Let's head to the Maldives. The first thing I like to do when I get my hands on a new camera is go and try and use the thing without overthinking it. So that is what we're gonna do here, just get straight to filming. And I wanted to share with you eight of my go-to shots that we're gonna use to test just how the X4 performs in these different shooting modes, contexts, and different things that I actually wanna use it for. And more specifically, building up to this sequence of underwater shots that I have been really excited to try capturing. Hey friend, this is a very good day. My favorite 360 action camera is getting an upgrade. So 360, it's like two lenses and similar to how your eyes erase your nose when you look forward, a 360 camera erases what it's mounted to. X4, it's the new camera. It's 8K, higher resolution. We're gonna see what the images look like. This is our first look. This is not a review. This is sponsored. This is beta firmware. I think that's most of the caveats. First go-to shot I wanted to share with you is me mode. This is a great way to capture easy to work with shots immediately out of camera without needing to track or animate anything. So this is awesome for people who feel intimidated by the editing process or simply just want clips fast out of camera. So the 360 camera will point back to the person holding onto the selfie stick, make the selfie stick invisible, and you are left with an awesome action perspective. Let's go to a pro tip here. So 90% of the time I've been carrying the 360 cameras on this production to get all these different shots. I've been using Insta360's new magnetic backpack strap mount. This thing is absolutely brilliant. I've gushed about it in depth in my accessory video. It's just such a great way to carry around the camera. And the thing that I like about it is that you can also use it as a makeshift chest mount, which is awesome. You can see in the shot here, I actually stand up on the electric surfboard before I take the camera off the mount because I want it to be able to balance and not fall over. And then I extend it out and start filming with it. It's just a really effective way for carrying around the camera. And if you like filming with 360, I recommend getting one of these mounts. Throughout the filming in this video, I'm gonna be using some of the main accessories over and over again. It's a pretty simple setup. I put all my favorite ones into a PDF. You can go grab it. It's got lists of my favorite settings, accessories, shot examples. Something you might wanna consider is getting a cage so that way you can attach extra accessories, protect the camera, and then also use additional mounts like the mouth mount. It gets an awesome POV perspective and I use this all the time. My other most used accessory is the new updated moto mount. It's just a fantastic clamp and you can use it on anything. I've really enjoyed filming in 360 for my personal Personal stuff. It's helped me do a better job of the stories I want to tell. My next shot is no drone, no problem. And this is, this is a must try shot. So it's using an extended selfie stick or an extra, extra long pole like the F-Pole Mini to get FPV style drone shots by just swinging the camera around and letting flow state stabilization figure out the rest. And I am looking forward to seeing what this footage looks like because the flagship feature of this new camera is recording in 8K. And of course, the way that I normally use this footage is reframing out of that 8K. So I want as much resolution as possible. So this is also assisted by the new H.265 encoding that's giving us a higher bit rate recording than we've ever had of these action cameras before. So I did a ton of shots just trying to slowly move the camera, move the camera fast and just seeing how it looks. And this has really benefited by having a subject matter to focus on and different foreground, background elements. This is lots of fun to film this way. And if you don't have an FPV drone, uh, this is just a great way to get fun, dynamic, fast moving shots. Christoph. Yeah. What do you think of the X4 so far? I love it. I love 8K, I love slow motion. So it's everything I needed in the 360 camera. The next mode in shooting examples that we're gonna show here is slow-mo. So this is a massive improvement from the X3. In fact, I never used the slow-mo modes on the X3 simply because the quality drop was just so dramatic. But the X4 allows you to go to 60 frames per second in 5.7K and even higher frame rates in 4K, 100 frames per second. And the initial results that I was seeing out of the back of the camera and then testing on my phone, I, I'm really happy. This is really cool to be able to have great 360 footage reframed and be slowing it down because this is just 
This is 360 footage unlike anything that I've shot before where you're actually getting what to me on the back of my phone looks like a relatively clean image. So as we were going out here, I just got more and more excited about the different possibilities filming in this mode. They also revamped and improved bullet time. So if you enjoy spinning the camera around, I highly recommend trying that out. But what I tried was a mode that I'm gonna dub the bullet throw. Uh, the X4 is waterproof to 10 meters. This leads perfectly into uh, an upgrade that I'm very excited about, and that's these new lens guards. So you're gonna notice these bayonet style mounts around the lens of the X4. And instead of using a sticker lens guard like we did in the past, which is hard to use, hard to stick on, and affected the image quality more than I'd prefer, you can now use these dome style bayonet mount ones that help you protect the lens because I cannot stress to you how critical it is to keep your lenses free from damage. So you need to protect these things like your life depends on it for the shot. I'm glad that I now don't have to replace an entire camera when I scratch them or send them in to get repaired. I can just put on a new lens guard. Alongside the higher resolution video modes, you also get higher resolution photos. That's not a mode that I use very often, but what I do use is the time-lapse mode. So now we get 11K time-lapses, so you can reframe to your heart's content. And this works really well when working on documentary stuff because you can just always be capturing a time-lapse to use as a transition point, and it's a brilliant way to use a 360 camera. Now we've covered a bunch of shot ideas so far, and while I was filming these, I also was trying to capture this special sequence I had in mind that I talked about at the beginning of this video. And spoiler, uh, I was failing pretty miserably, and I'm gonna explain more in a moment of how that was going. But I also wanted to just explain that a bunch of the footage during this first look video was also captured by my friends Jesse and Kristoff. And this was so much fun working as a larger crew together on this big project. We are a crew of nine, it was a lot of fun. So this is the man responsible for all of this. Hello. Well, this might be this might take the cake as the most bonkers production. Welcome to the Maldives. We make a good pairing. Yes, it's we like do. salt and pepper. It is. Sweet and sour. Someone's kid and their dad. <laughs> Christoph was just a massive help here. I had so much fun filming with him and his knowledge and creativity when it comes to filming is just really inspiring to me. So, I'd love for you to go drop a follow on his Instagram as he has some really creative edits dropping soon that I think you're gonna love. And in the spirit of production, we were here working on a massive project all together, all nine of us, and that's another use case of 360 cameras. So we were filming with tons of different camera rigs, and using 360 for behind the scenes is actually really, really fun. So you can mount it to your main camera rig, and it allows you to just get the moments in between moments and create social content, capture video while you're holding your photo camera. And the X4 now has a larger battery than the X3. So when you film in 5.7K, you can have an optimal runtime of 135 minutes. Next shot idea is hyperlapse or gimbal-esque movements with the X4. So there's a six axis gyro magic that's happening inside of the camera to use flow state stabilization. And this means you can essentially just walk with the camera and get footage that looks incredibly stable if you just walk in a straight line. Of course, technique here does help if you do the ninja walk, but the shots you can get just look really fun. And I spent way too much time uh, masking out these, <laughs> these transitions that I used in the intro. Uh, so I'm just gonna play them again because I spent way too much time on them and had way too much fun with that. And one thing that I noticed when playing back these clips is that the mic and sound recording improvements they made to the X4 are really noticeable to me. I'm gonna be using a lot more sound that was actually captured inside of the 360 camera. They have these windscreens you can stick on as well. I personally didn't test those yet because we were doing so much water filming, but these would also help massively for mountain biking, motorcycles, anything like that. Getting great sound is always helpful. What have you enjoyed about filming underwater so far? All of it, I think. I think every every aspect of it. I like the wildlife. I like, oh my gosh, the clarity of the water. My underwater filming <laughs> was was going awful. And this was the main reason why I was so excited to come on this production. I had never swam in crystal clear water like this, and I've always wanted to capture underwater footage. So when I saw the team that Will was assembling for this production, and when I heard that people who actually film underwater for their job was coming, I got really excited for capturing some of my own footage. And one of those people was Pema. She's an incredible freediver, and she brought her underwater housing. And I was so excited because all the underwater footage that I've seen before 
looks mesmerizing. I've always wanted to capture my own underwater footage, so I assumed that I could pick it up pretty quickly. And that's where I was just completely wrong. I have very little experience swimming in the ocean and trying to manage your breath, your fins, snorkel, mask, keeping water out of the mask because of the beard, swimming down into the water while your body wants to float, trying to hold yourself steady and then frame a shot. And then basically the first whole hours that I was filming with the dive housing were just a complete waste of time. The results weren't anything like what I was going for. My original sequence that I saw in my head, this was just nothing close. And while I was struggling, I was watching Kristoff having the time of his life with the dive housing on his X4. And we were filming at this sunken shipwreck, awesome location, and my footage was not going well. And I was watching Kristoff just have an absolute blast. So I asked him kindly, can I use your dive housing for a shot or two of my own? And of course he said yes. And immediately it was just so much more straightforward to focus on the swimming and holding my breath and not have to worry about framing up a shot. And even just these first couple of moments, they aren't amazing, but they are better. And that's where my mind started racing. I went now, okay, now the sequence that I have in mind, maybe I could actually film that on the new X4 instead of filming it with a dive housing like this big professional rig that I was expecting, maybe I can actually do it on the X4. Okay, underwater filming. Uh, this is the section that I'm most excited about. So using the Ace Pro, it's awesome because it's great quality, single lens, you can do 4K 60, 4K 120, you can do really high frame rate. But the challenge about mounting a camera like this is that you really want to set it up in the exact spot and then leave it. So this is where just my absolute joy of filming with 360 really makes such a difference. This right here is the dive housing and it makes a world of difference. So this helps correct for the optical differences once you're in water because water changes the way the optics of the camera work. And essentially what that means is that this protects the camera from both water, even though the camera is waterproof, but it helps make sure that it doesn't get destroyed from deeper pressure in the water. And then it also allows you just to just get bonkers like you can reframe anything. So for every single shot you grab with this setup, you can then do 10 different reframes. The first location that I tried to use it, immediately I was, I was having issues. Uh, there was low visibility, kept getting water in the mask. So we switched to the complete other side of the island. And this immediately was a lot more promising. The water was more clear, but I was mounting the camera to a sticky action camera mount. And the force of the water as you're using the sea scooter was just way too much and it tore off the mount in a matter of five minutes. So I went back to shore, I grabbed my moto mount, clamped the selfie stick to the actual handle of the sea bob went back out and in the matter of 15 minutes, I got some results that I really, really liked. Like this was starting to get into the realm of some underwater footage that I was getting excited about. And later out of the water, I pulled up some of the shots on my phone and I really liked them, but I thought, hey, for this sequence, it would be so cool if there was like a buddy vibe and you're hanging out with your with your friend and just kind of mobbing underneath the water with two people. So I convinced Christoph to come back with me the next day. We went into the water. <laughs> and this this next sequence of footage that we captured with the underwater housing was just so much fun i love the way that this looks i love the feeling that it conveys and it was just a really cool way to be capturing a sequence of images this footage right here i am just in love with So this experience of practicing with the sea bob was really encouraging to me and we still had time left on my trip for me to try capture this more 
uh, this, this shot that I had dreamed of, this sequence that I had dreamed of before we even arrived to the Maldives. And so this actual sequence and the whole journey of me working through my fear of holding my breath in the water, I actually made an entire film about that because it's a story that's kind of personal to me. I like the idea of overcoming something that makes me feel fear and also having the objective of trying to capture something visually that I'm proud of. So that experience I put together into a film, it's gonna be coming to the channel. I hope you appreciate it. This is just a little tease. Uh, if you look carefully in the actual intro sequence of this very video, I snuck one of the shots from the sequence in, you might be able to notice it, but I'm just so thrilled with how much fun it was to use this dive housing. I am completely hooked with underwater filming and maybe one day my, my swimming skills will be up to par so I could actually use a dive housing on a professional camera. But until then, the Insta360 is just absolutely crushing it. What are we doing? We're putting Levi first, heaviest goes first. Yeah. So test, test the strength of the rope. So I actually haven't had a chance to even look at the footage yet. So I wanna know from you, the commenters at home, in this first look video, as I now have to edit this footage, what do you think about what it looks like? I'd love to hear, can you tell a difference between the X3 stuff I've used in the past and then what you're now seeing in this video? Like without us putting it side to side in a direct comparison, do you feel a difference in the shot? Like, do you feel a difference in the reframed moments? Does it feel higher resolution? I'm now curious, you've probably seen dozens and dozens of videos today already if you're interested in this kind of thing so you can come to your own conclusions. But for the viewers of just my stuff, when you see my stuff and then you see this, does it look better? Does it look the same? What do you think? I'd love to hear it.